All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. The conversation starts now. We're still here with my guest, Honorable Dan Manza, Senator for Makweni, Honorable Godfrey Sotsi, Senator for Vihiga, and Dr. Kuro Kod, Party Leader, Third Way Alliance. Thank you so much for making time. And let's start with you, Sotsi, on this. It's been 14 years since the promulgation of the Constitution. And we've tried to legislate morality, tried to bring in Chapter 6 of the Constitution, but that is still not working. Both of you here admit that Parliament has failed. And we could ask you a question. So why don't you resign? Well, uh, maybe before I go that, to, to that, let me uh, correct uh, my good friend, Ekuru, who said that uh, my party leader hijacked <laughs> the JNC's movement. <laughs> I, I think uh, that's a very unfortunate statement because uh, Raila is not a JNC, and there's no way he could have hijacked the JNC movement. And Raila has not stopped anyone from demonstrating or picketing. The JNCs are free uh, to demonstrate. They are free to do whatever they are supposed to do because that is their right in the Constitution. So I think it's not fair for him to have made that allegation that Raila has hijacked the JNC. Uh, it is not true. Uh, but coming to your Did point... Did your party benefit from the Gen Z's mm. protest? Mm -hmm. the, the benefit benefit in which way? The current position that you've seen, your former leaders are all now in government. Broad government. John Badi, mm. his weekly for Paranya, there's Ali Hassan, Joe. But they are not there Even as a party. Even you became the, the deputy they, president. They are not there as a the party. Event. They are not there as a party. They are there as individuals. No, that's we, do not, we do not have any coalition agreement with the how did UDA they come in or, or Kenya Kwanzaa. In your view, how did they come in? Just two months before the Gen Z protest? You see, not. you see, we, 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 cannot, we cannot say that because our former party leaders are in, in government, then they have hijacked Gen Z's uh, uh, movement or they have benefited from the Gen Z's What action. necessitated their coming into government? <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we, had, uh, we, the, the, we had that problem, the but protest. I think Gen it's Z unfair. Part. But it's a highly unfair for you now to say that that was a result of uh, uh, eating on uh, Gen Z sweat. It's really unfair about that. And, and these people have come forward and said, we are not going into government as a party. We are going into government as individuals. What preceded their getting into government? You see, let me tell you, if today we had a vacancy uh, in... Uh, in, in the cabinet and someone is appointed, would you necessarily say this person has been appointed because of uh, this vacancy having been created because of this reason? You it's just a vacancy and a vacancy. Why was the cabinet And it's your own personal conviction yeah. to make a decision whether you want to join or you don't want to join. Let me ask this question. If it happened, so let me give you an why example. Why was the cabinet dissolved? If it happened that uh, I, Godfrey Osozi, was given that uh, uh, vacancy to become a cabinet secretary, my conviction, I would not have taken it. I so, would have said no. So let us, let us not generalize and make it look like a party so you state, position. You, you are other. answering a kuru. That's what I'm just trying to paraphrase his concern because yes. it says you hijacked the Gen Z protests. No, I was, Z, Z protests I, 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 was, uh, I was just correcting. I was I was I was I was politely. Cabinet. So I was how, politely. How, is it, how is he wrong? You see, he's wrong because it's not factual. You cannot link the two things together, and you cannot now uh, lump the blame on one individual. Raila himself has not benefited from JNC. In which way? <laughs> He has not. As an individual, he has not. So maybe he should have said maybe someone else has benefited from Gen Z. Or the ODM party. Yeah. Is, but ODM party, phrase? even ODM party, where does it come? Because yeah. the entire leadership is there. Yeah, yeah. Right from the minority. The <laughs> no, they are not leader, leaders anymore. Deputy leaders. They are not leaders anymore. Their we have taken their space. Their resignation as deputy leaders came after they were Very appointed. convenient. Anyway, that is, <laughs> that, that's another debate for another day. <laughs> no, let no, me, no. Now, let no, me okay. now go no, to the okay. Trevor, yeah, I, won't allow, let, I won't allow Senator to get away with this. No, no, no. Yeah. It's my right of reply. No, no, no. I have a right of reply. I was replying to what you said. Let's Allow me a rebuttal yes. on what you're saying. You see, uh, Senator Sotsi, you know, I know you as a, you're a good friend. But you see, we may have been born at night, but it wasn't last night. So what exactly is playing out in the Kenyan political scene? You know, is choreographed. And that's why for me, Trevor, yeah. I wish you could replay 
I hope your librarians can actually pull out the videos of Paranya describing Ruto, Asan Joe, saying the nasty things they said about Mbadi, and even Nani, uh, the, the, the CS. Wandai. Uh, Wandai. I wish you could replay. Because for me, that's exactly what I want us to discuss today. How dishonest we are as a people. You have a senator here who is claiming, thinking that Kenyans are very foolish, that they cannot see the choreography. That all of a sudden, you have got you had, uh, people claiming to be the opposition to the government of the day. Yeah. Okay? <clears throat> you know, some of them voted yes even to the finance bill that Kenyans uh, rejected. Then all of a sudden, Oh, there is this dalliance yeah. and, you know, camaraderie with, with, with the government of the day. Uh, members of your party are being appointed and you are telling us here that, no, they came as an individual. Of course, the truth for the matter, and I will tell you this, uh, Senator Otsotsi, with all due respect, it is your party leader who actually recommended we should be appointed into that cabinet. I can tell you that for a fact. And I can swear an affidavit today to say this is exactly how the, 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 the negotiation happened. Yeah. Just like you cannot tell us, at today, the marriage between William Ruto and uh, Rigadi Gashagwa uh, is, in, is, is, is not falling because of the betrayals of the arrangements in 2022. You know? So let, let's be honest. Okay. And, and I think, Trevor, the only way this country can change going forward is can we at least to be, begin to be a bit truthful? Okay. Me, me, I've said it many times in the show, and I will repeat it again, even to President William Ruto. At least if he can stop lying, at least reduce the lying. Okay. So you're talking about the psyche of the nation. Mm. Where does the failure lie when the executive runs wild? Despite the fact that you have put this in the Constitution, it's there. There's Chapter 6 mm. in integrity, but nobody seems to follow it. Is it yeah. a reflection of the people like Manzo is saying? or what? Is no. You see... The people of Kenya said we want a certain type and character of leaders. And therefore they elect Mahanzo, they elect Osotsi to go and represent them. And that is the spirit of chapter six. Now, the question we should be asking Trevor, it's not a failure of the constitution or the people when they elect Mahanzo and Osotsi into public office. What are they doing with their leadership in that office? For example, in ensuring that aspects of this constitution is used. I like what Mahanzo has described, because Mahanzo is talking about Article 201, 201 of the constitution, about public finance, and prudent and, uh, you know, what's called prudent and responsible use of public money. Should the president be gallivanting all over the country, you know, trying to do political, you know, uh, you know political planning and all that for 2027, you know, with all the costs that comes with it, is that prudent use of public resources? It is not, in my view. And therefore, going to the bigger question, it is actually the failure of leadership in the country. Because, you see, Trevor, and I've said it many times, I think even in your show here, that you can even write yourself the most beautiful constitution in the world. But if it's not being implemented or being followed, you know, if the letter and even the spirit of that constitution or the law is not being followed, that constitution may not even be worth the paper it's written on. Because it's that leadership that can actually uh, uh, inspire. Uh, let me draw some parallels. Eh? The American Constitution was written uh, in what, 1877, if I'm not wrong? 1876. Yes, yeah. there are, thereabouts. By just a group of individuals who are actually rivals, by the way. But they met in Philadelphia and decided, no, we want to write the Constitution for the country. It is probably one of the shortest Constitution in the world. I think it's 1,400 words. You know, uh, of course, if you had with the other 50 uh, constitution of the individual states, but they leave the spirit and letter of that constitution. A country like UK does not even have a written constitution, despite having colonized us and purported to have actually given us a constitution written in the Lancaster House Conference in London. But they don't have a constitution. But when it comes to failure of leadership, yeah. there is what they call the, co the constitutional principle of resignation. And if you, if you follow the last event, the last prime ministers of, of, of the UK, for example, you had a very brilliant man, uh, David Cameron, because he felt that when, he, when, when, when Britain was leaving the European Union, he wasn't a, a good captain enough, and he resigned. 
then came the other lady, then came the other lady, and then came, you know, all this. So the, the, the spirit of a constitution must be reflected in the leadership of a country. It's how we, we follow it. For example, the finance bill uh, was rejected by Kenyans. What will the, a responsible leadership do? It will say, okay, this bill clearly does not reflect the wishes of the people. Because again, that's what Article 1 is all about. That all sovereign power and authority vests in the people, yeah. that they can exercise it directly or indirectly through their elected representatives. Mm -hmm. Now, when the elected representatives pass bad laws that do not reflect the wishes of the people, you know, that's how they should either resign, and, and in the, we put it in the constitution. Yeah. You can actually resign. And I still wonder what, what Osoti and Mahanzo are doing in, in the Senate when they are clearly admit yeah. that uh, parliament has been captured, yeah. has failed, now we see a president who is not even accounting for us his uh, promises of 2022, yes. going around campaigning about 2027, and of course capturing a man who has a political uh, constituency yes. that can actually disrupt parliament. Because that's what President William Ruto is actually doing. President William Ruto, uh, maybe in his wisdom or lack of it, uh, decided that, hey, you know, for me to sit comfortable, I need to bring in Raila Amolo Odinga because Raila Amolo Odinga has psychophantic following. So uh, let me bring him so that, and by the way, he's not, he's not being honest to Raila eh? yes. because Raila will not get the AUC position. Why? But William Ruto will say, oh, you know, Simuliona Mimi Lijaribo. So you think he will not get the like it is your mimi likata. So and that's, that's, that will be his argument. Yeah. So you think Raila will not get the AUC seat? No, he won't. He's not even qualified. Okay. Look at the look at the qualifications. For for you to be a chair of EAC. I know it is a designated position. Yeah, for the Eastern African region. Yes. Yeah, it is East African region. But in terms of qualification, it doesn't. The Djibouti guy will be trailer. And let me tell you, I'm making a political prophecy and I hope you can, can invite me when uh, the election is done. It won't happen. Baba Taoshua, in fact, as they say, as he say in the, in the, in the Luo, they, they will nango baba. Every good thought, yes. I, I, want us, I want us to shift into the conversation. No, 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 no. But I'll give you a I, I, think, I think it's not fair yeah. for uh, distinguished <laughs> personality like uh, a guru to make uh, such uh, pronouncement on TV yeah. <laughs> that Raila is going to lose. I mean, on what basis is he, is he saying that? I'm your position is going to be. No, what is I, mean, I mean, I mean, it's not fair at What all. is your position? The campaigns have started. The elections are going to be in February. Mm -hmm. uh, Raila, he's campaigning. Yeah. Uh, and he has been campaigning. And what is your problem? Uh, and, 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 uh, and I think uh, Raila has his own network, mm -hmm. networks in Africa, away from even Kenyan government. I have been to, with him to West Africa, and I can attest to that. Okay. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I think it is uh, not prudent for you to uh, say yeah. that uh, because uh, of one or two things that Raila is going to lose. So in your Let view? us all support Raila, because if Raila wins, it's not uh, Raila winning. Okay. It is uh, Kenya winning. So, in your view, so we must look at it as a Kenyan agenda and not uh, an individual agenda for Raila Odinga. Okay, so what is your prophecy? He has said that he will lose. What do you say? Well, uh, my position is that uh, Raila is going to put in his very, uh, very best. He's going to lobby around. He uh, has already lobbied a number of countries and is continuing to lobby many countries. Yeah. And I think Raila is going to win this uh, AU uh, position. Okay. Let us not politicize this uh, process. Well, 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 so you, you not your, view is, your view is just as valid as his. Yeah. He says yeah. he's going to win, he says he's going to lose. Yeah. So it's either win yeah. or lose. It's a prediction. Yeah. But, but so it's a prediction. Yeah, we'll see what happens in prediction. But, but you see, realistic. But, I want to be more realistic. But, but, but he should tell us, what I'm he should tell us, he should tell us the reasons. You cannot just say he's going to lose the Djibouti guy. Yeah. 
I mean, that's a very unfair statement. But I'll just say that what qualification is. Very unfair statement. What is your reason for his winning? Yeah. Raila is a formidable uh, African Pan uh, Pan Africanist. And uh, I I have said that I have traveled with him in West Africa and I can attest to his capability, his networks. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's sufficient for him to win. Okay. Well, well, let me be yeah. more so let's hear Manzo. even so with all the serious campaigns. While we wish Raila well as a Kenyan, uh, I want us to be realistic on uh, diplomacy and what sort of election is going through. This election is by presidents, mm -hmm. and it is more of application of diplomacy in the country. And the main leader of the diplomatic mission in that particular campaign is the president himself. So what does the president do? Instead of going to seek other presidents, yeah. or even get into the phone calls with them, uh, he, he chooses not even uh, Musalia, but the permanent secretary, the principal secretary, and a team of Dr. other Kenyans, yes. then uh, a good, a good classmate, uh, you know, and a team of other Kenyans. You know, this is, you know, you know when you, that's why you heard Museveni say, some young man showed up in, mm. in, in my state house. Probably Museveni was expecting his president. So this is something which must be done by the president himself, or Raila and even Kalonzo, who also have a lot of networks. Uh, they, 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 they all should be campaigning for him. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that uh, if, if really Kenya wants Raila to go, they must go beyond Rutorani to Nyanza. Mm -hmm. He should have been in West Africa, not Nyanza. Yeah. Uh, Which starts next week, because I believe there's a <laughs> yes. meeting in China, more than 30 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, be meeting. It's, it's not, if, if Kenya wants to be serious about it, and they should not look down upon the opponents, you yeah. know, they should not Trevor. underrate them. Trevor, uh, we I'll should, give we you should a make sure, let me just yeah. finish. I have to, we I have to respond. We should, one make sure, the UC conversation. <laughs> we should make sure that uh, now that he's in the race and he has done the paperwork, yeah. it is the decision of the president, and it has to be two thirds. Therefore, when in status I didn't see Frank von, a Frankfurt president, mm. that was very telling diplomatically. When a president sends a minister or sends a principal secretary, that is a diplomatic communication mm. that we are not happy with this. When, 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 uh, <coughs> when, uh, when, when the president of Uganda blesses and curses at the same time, you must know the message he has so, sent. So, what is your prediction? <laughs> My prediction I'll is so, win or uh, lose. Well, I, I don't want to say we'll win or lose, but I'm saying President Ruto has a duty to do. They it will depend on him answer. whether Raila will win, <laughs> win or, or lose. lose. Because I intend, God willing, it all depends in on February, I'll call this same part. And how the other win presidents of Africa view Kenya and the few presidents of Africa. No, my answer is win or lose. Yeah, just make a prediction. <laughs> Right now, really, I don't have sufficient <laughs> yeah. numbers. You know, so Trevor, yeah, before Sosie comes, no, right? No, no, let me give a prediction. <laughs> yes. Right now, the, the, the Djibouti person is leading with a number of governments. He, yeah. the, he has more, he has 29, while we have 18. Right now. Right now, the Djibouti... Uh, so win or lose, man. Is, is leading, right now. So win or lose. We hope really win. Win. <laughs> let, 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 let me come in. Yes. You, you see, this is how I'm deciding. I, I, yes. <laughs> yes, I, I think my colleagues here who are all lawyers uh, are, uh, are uh, arguing without facts. Yeah. You see, when you say that the Djibouti guy is leading uh, by 29, simply because uh, 29 states are uh, uh, Frankfurt, uh, I think that's incorrect because... I know there are a significant number of Frankfurt countries which mm -hmm. are going to support Raila. Eh? And uh, in fact, I've seen the argument in some of the analysis in the media mm -hmm. saying that uh, the Francophone, Anglophone uh, divide yeah. is what will determine. Uh, that is not uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, correct. There are other dynamics in, in, in diplomacy which uh, can be exploited uh, to make Raila win. As I've said, Raila has w even uh, uh, aside to Kenyan government, yeah. he has his own network in Africa. Okay. Remember most of the presidents who are uh, currently serving. Who are those? Uh, but they should have come for yeah, the launch. Most of the who presidents are those? who are currently serving have, come have worked with Raila in the opposition. Who are those? I know like uh, the president of uh, Ivory Coast, they, they've served together in the uh, opposition movement in Africa, the president of Zambia, the president of uh, Congo, and many others. 
So I think when you argue, you must argue with facts. Okay. Yes, there are 29 uh, 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 Francophone countries, yeah. but that does not mean that all of them will support uh, the, the, RC the, the, not even the candidate anybody. from Djibouti. Mm. When you it's say the that RC there was no, not send anybody. when you say there was no representation not from yeah, Francophone countries in East Africa in, in, the, in the event in the, in the state Africa. house, yeah. but. Mm. They if you watch, you so watch we'll keenly, yeah. there was a statement from Rwanda presented by a representative of uh, President Kagame. Okay. There was a statement uh, from Burundi presented by the uh, representative Prime. of President of Jivu, Jivu, uh, Burundi. And he was very emphatic okay. that their position, they were going to support All right. Raila. Fine. Let, let, so, you this. know, what we still that? have a lot of in law, the trip for in law in what he's Uganda. describing, eh? Yeah is what we call submissions. You can make your submissions. Yeah. Just like uh, that drama we saw in, in State House. Those were submissions. It does not necessarily translate to a favorable judgment. And to a vote. Mm -hmm. uh, or to a vote. It does not. And for me, Either way, uh, and for me on, honestly, and, and I honestly think of Sauti, I hope you can take this message. Eh? You people should stop lying to Baba. Because I think you're, you're lying to Raila Ra Ra on this on this issue. I see, you can even see now the, this conversation. It's almost about obsession with the personalities. And that's why in the, uh, at, Kenya, at 14 years of the Constitution, you know, we are still obsessed with the personalities and individuals, you know, in leadership. But we are not looking at what is the outcome, what is transformational about those leaders. So, and, and by the way, they will not tell Baba that even Ruto's image in the continent <laughs> and globally is a negative <laughs> effect on whether actually Baba will be elected or not. Yes. And let me tell you, I will say it here, yeah, Trevor, I, even in terms of the global perspectives, our president's image globally is a negative effect on Baba. And that's why, for me, me, I like Baba. I mean, he's my friend, you know? But I don't want people to lie to him that you'll get this position when I know the factors. Yeah. Because we lawyers work on uh, either evidence directly or circumstantial evidence. <laughs> yes. And I think circumstantial evidence shows actually Baba is being just propped okay. and is being used politically, yeah. you know, so that tomorrow somebody can come and say, Unajua nyinyi watu wa nyanza, sinilisema hivi, tulifanya hivi, lakini sio mimi, tulite. All right. <laughs> Let's go to nyanza now because it's there for a four-day trip as we wind up on this <laughs> but let's bring up the feedback first. See what you're saying at, uh, online at Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. Let's bring that up on screen and see before we talk about President Ruto's four-day trip in Nyanza that started yesterday. And we'll speak about that shortly. Mm. Sir so Nixon Dugire says, leaders who hold themselves accountable to nobody ought not to be trusted by anybody. Accountability is the measure of a leader's height. Okay. Lazaro says, ex-Samburu governor conviction can be just an isolated case or DPP trying to prove worthiness to the emerging Gen Z. <coughs> Dixon says, I think former DPP Nurdin Haji should be grilled why he wanted to withdraw this Lenon Kulal case. He administered miscarriage of justice. Okay. You see next one, the next one that comes up. Bob Butieno says, charges against former Governor Moses Lenol Kulal by EACC Kenya is a mere stunt PR because they haven't nailed anyone from the last regime when former President Uru admitted publicly two billion shillings is being lost mm. on a daily basis. Dixon again says, we are not serious as a country. Senate someone's former governor of a textile factory who happens to be a senator. A case was dismissed on forgery because of DCI obtaining evidence in a hotel of a victim choice. Surely. What's all this? Okay. Peter says, the Senate and Parliament have failed to carry out their oversight roles. Let Honorable Manzo and Honorable Sotsi accept that they have failed us and resign as early as now. Okay. By the way, they have said it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Muita says, as Emil leader Raila Odinga betrayed the Gen Zs when he went to bed with the executive and to make it worse, he offers us the likes of Oparanya and Joho while he, <laughs> well, we have well-educated, corrupt, free people in ODM. Jasper says, our greatest problem is in not obeying our constitution and accountability. Gen Z had us almost on the nick of doing just that, but Raila gave the forces of impunity a new lease of life. And for that, he should lose at the AU. Okay. <laughs> God, he says, in Kenya, anything goes. Raila Odinga, who has been fiercely and vehemently castigating government, is now part of the mechanisms that makes the wheels of government move. The constitution seems not to be on silent suspension. Okay. 
Let's take in the last one here. Remy Butia says, Kenya politics has been pegged on ethnic identities above everything else. The reasons why the oneness, the reapproachment, the unity eludes the possibility, possible Kenyan nation. Okay. Let's bring up Kwesotsi now. The president is in uh, Nyanza for a four-day trip. There's been a lot of speculation. Will ODM work with UDA in 2027? Well, uh, uh, Trevor, the president has uh, a right, just like any Kenyan, to travel to any part of this country and to express himself in whichever manner he wants to express himself. That is his right under the Constitution. Uh, but uh, I do not think uh, the president is doing um, uh, something good for this country uh, because we have a lot of issues that it needs to be fixed, uh, particularly the demands by agencies. Mm. And uh, I don't think with this calm that uh, is there in the country, uh, it's uh, the right thing for him to do to start running around on uh, uh, rooftops and uh, making pronunciation mm. and relaunching projects which he has launched previously. Uh, it, it doesn't sit well with Kenyans. And uh, I think it's annoying Kenyans and even more. So uh, my view is that the president should calm down, sit and work for Kenyans and uh, deliver on the promises he made to Kenyans without necessarily running up and down. You see, for the last few days, he's been to almost every part of this country, mm. relaunching projects, making political pronunciation, and we have a pile of issues uh, waiting for his action on his desk in State House. So uh, I, I am among the people who are saying that uh, President Ruto, please sit down and work for Kenyans. Uh, we, as Kenyans, we want to see the issues that affect us being addressed. The issues raised by agencies, uh, he made a pronunciation that he was going to deal with them. For example, he said he was going to reduce the number of advisors. We now see he's now appointing advisors. So uh, that is the first issue. The second issue is that uh, I, do not want to associate what uh, is happening in Nyanza with the outcome of 2027 election. You know, politics in this country is very dynamic. He may go to Nyanza today, <coughs> he's welcomed, the people are there, uh, but 2027 may be a different ball game altogether. You never know the dynamics of politics. So that's why I think it's... Uh, uh, it is wise that uh, he spends more time delivering on the promises he made to Kenyans. Okay. And as ODM, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, we have been uh, portrayed as being part of government just simply because uh, uh, a few of our leaders were appointed into government and accepted to join in government. And a few more expected. Yeah, but, but the position is that when parties come together, legally, they need to sign coalition agreement. We do not have any coalition agreement with uh, Kenya Kwanza or UDA. And that you can confirm with the registrar of political parties. There is none. So when you say ODM is in government, how? But they are. Huh? They how are we let in government? Finish. I'll give you a chance. We are not in government. Just write it down. It is uh, Joho, Paranya, Wandai, and Badi and uh, a school who are in government. And they had to resign from their positions before they joined government. Yeah. We, our position is very clear. We are going to continue playing our oversight role. We are going to continue play our role yeah. as the minority in parliament. And uh, Senator Manzo is here, he can attest to that. Will you leave that? When we had party? the issue of uh, Will you Kawira Mwangaza coming, point? It is the ODM people who mobilize themselves mm -hmm. to say, no, this is not right. Will you this is the not right. Coalition? We say this is not right. And we continue doing that. Will you leave the Azimio coalition? Because the other members are mm. very uncomfortable with your presence. You know, le let me tell you one thing. I think we need, uh, we need to be very objective. Raila has not gone to AU. That is one. 
elections are going to be there in February. And uh, after election is when Raila will transition to, to AU. So this, uh, th this thing of saying, oh, he has to uh, cede space for yeah. so and so, Why, but I think he's not here, there. Uh, there. And by the way, you know, Raila has not stopped anyone from becoming a, a, a leader of opposition in this country. Okay. The leader of opposition is, should come out clearly in the public. Okay. Pose issues when uh, you uh, put the government under checks and balances. Okay. It will emerge itself. All right. So I, I, I think one is premature uh, to, uh, to yeah. try and say that uh, because Raila is campaigning to go to AU, yeah. then he then has he exited before even elections are done. Okay. I, Banzo, I think we yes. need to, we need to, I have a question. we, we need let, to let, let allow him, no, 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 let, let me also finish this point. Yeah. I think we need to be uh, patient until uh, February when elections are done, yeah. which we are uh, seriously hopeful mm -hmm. that Raila is going to win. Okay. Once he goes to, uh, and the Addis. Then you saw that. Then the tweet. transition process can. But what is happening now is un, totally unnecessary. Okay. There is no vacuum in Azimio. All right. And even the people who are saying they want to take over Azimio, apart from Kalonzo, they are not even members of Azimio Council. Okay. Eugene Wamalo is not a member. Yeah. Uh, Kioni is not a member. So how are they going to? Make a decision okay. without yes, yes. Uh, being yes. members of Azimio okay. Council. Let's hear my answer. <laughs> First of all, I want to say that uh, you know there are two main registered coalitions yeah. uh, in the country: Kenya Kwanza and uh, Azimio. Azimio. And the only time you dissolve uh, a coalition is when all the other parties have resigned from that uh, coalition. So, so long as uh, apart we don't have a letter or letters then that coalition uh, remains. W what I want to, s to, to say is that uh, right now Raila is campaigning to go to African Union. War and Turuto if Raila doesn't go to African Union because you still run again. And even he's free to go to African Union and resign in 2027 and come and buy. So, so now this stops Raila Odinga, you know, doing all these things and ODM doing what it has done. But also the remaining uh, bit of Azimio carries on, you know, with the, the coalition as Azimio uh, and uh, has organized itself very well, is uh, rebranding. Uh, and uh, we are going to have, uh, you know, a formidable force in 2027 to, to take on Ruto. I want to say that uh, when, when, when Ruto rushes to Luo Nyanza, instead of going around Africa and talking to friends, uh, President Zua is friends because he's a President Zua will vote. Uh, and, uh, and they will vote freely, and you know, and and they have to have been uh, given reasons to vote for Raila Odinga. If they haven't, and the and, and the government of Kenya hasn't bothered, you see, when when you, you you know a principal secretary of Kenya can only talk to a principal secretary of another country, a minister for foreign affairs in Kenya can only talk to a minister of another foreign affairs in another country. And uh, the president of the Republic of Kenya can engage another president of the Republic of Kenya. The biggest question is what uh, our, friends, our friends have indicated. What is, uh, what is Kenya's perception in the world? First of all, Kenya is seen mm -hmm. very well. What he's trying to do is try to sort out his local politics. You see African Union. It could be a similar thing in uh, Djibouti. But clearly, every reasonable president of Africa yeah. knows what Kenya is trying to do. That, that uh, if, 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 if Raila had become president, probably Kenya would not have had uh, a candidate to Africa. You know, would have had a different or more uh, amicable candidate there. Okay. So, so when you look at that in the current politics, we, even when the president goes to Nyanza and just going to make pr promises, first of all, he has used a lot of taxpayers' money to do that. Hosting a president is a very expensive affair. In fact, the money used to host uh, a president can do, can repair quite a number of roads which were uh, destroyed during the floods. Yeah. So, so I don't think he's going to offer any solution.
And any development done in Nyanza was done by President Kibaki and, uh, and Raila when he was Prime Minister. Uh, the rest have done very little. They only implemented the flagship projects which yeah. were there. And I want to say not only Nyanza, yeah. the rest of country, including I saw Kurosei, a road which is impossible. You know, the rest of country is suffering. There is underdevelopment. Uh, no con contractors are not completing yeah. their works. And I think the president should sit in state house and deliver. So is if not so, yeah. be the first one to resign. Before parliament resigns, then the president should resign. Is your party going to call for a new round of protests? Well, it's one of the things in the offing. Mm -hmm. if, if we have a, the same finance bill coming back, we are going to have protests in the country. Okay. That finance bill cannot be brought back to the house to be repeated the same way now that Raila is going to African Union. Okay. No way. Right. Kenyans will not accept. All right. Ikuru, this trip by the president to Luonyanza, is it the political comprehensive insurance for 2027? <coughs> you see, it's a campaign, obviously. And uh, <coughs> what William Ruto is actually doing by going to Luonyanza and by ditching the, uh, the, 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 the Kikuyus, the Murima, because that's, those are the facts of our politics. People talk in terms of regions and tribes and all that. So William Ruto knows very well that he has lost favor with the, with the mountain, yeah? especially because of his squabbles with his, his deputy. And they are not telling Kenyans the truth, and I think that's part of the dishonesty we are discussing, Trevor, and I hope we can discuss it again. Well, I know for a fact, and I can tell you this, that when people go into political coalitions, they actually divide uh, response. I mean, they, they agree, when we win, I'll give you this, I'll give you that, and then betrayal kicks in. And that's why you always see there's a fallout, okay? Senator Osotsi here, honestly, Senator, why can't we just be honest to Kenyans? When your party leader is in dalliance, is in bed with, with a failing regime, you know, like this one, surely how do you come here to the national television and say that ODM is not in, in government? Of course ODM is in government. And that's why you can even oh. see, you can see the turnaround. So oh, can I explain let to you? Explain. Yeah. Can I explain yeah. to you? I'll give you a yeah? chance to respond. And, 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 I, and I actually challenge Trevor here, and citizen, play for us the videos by Asan, the videos by Asan Joho, Oparanya, Wandai, and and uh, and uh, Badi. and Badi, what they said on national Indeed, television. Actually, sometimes, but yeah, what what they said about this regime, you know, and now they are there, and these are leaders, these are leaders in in, in ODM. So to come to national television and lie that ODM is not in government, and then secondly, the dialogue between the party leader of ODM with the president of the Republic of Kenya. You know, and especially, I mean, it compromises the whole question of, uh, you know, of, of checking government, you know. And, and, and ODM, by the way, in fact, I, I dare ask the question, and I hope uh, uh, Osotsi will respond to this. Why were the, those uh, four seats redistributed among Azimio members? Even, the, even the, you know, this excuse that, oh, we don't have a coalition with them. It's an excuse. But if you really mean well, yeah, you know you you are you cannot claim to be a member of this coalition, and then all of a sudden, when when uh, when the positions to serve in government, uh, you know, come through, you only look at your own your at your own house, the ODM. But secondly, Trevor, Osotsi will not admit, and I challenge him. There is opposition within opposition. There is disquiet in ODM. Mm, big time. Big time. You know, we've seen some members of the ODM actually oppose. This dalliance with the, you know, and someone like Kososi, of course, in, in, in him, because he's a, he's a loyalist to Baba, he will not come to national tradition and say, no, I don't like that, because maybe tomorrow in Viga he will not be electable because he needs Baba to do it. And that's the reality of our politics. So what we are saying today, we are seeing a repeat of 2018 and Sheikh. That is exactly what is happening. And why is that happening? Because we have a government that lied to Kenyans, we have a president that lied to Kenyans about the promises. And because we have got a very feckless opposition, you know, feckless leadership that could not check on the government. But, but what do they do? They have to go into bed with the government. And, and the reason is simple. Government in Kenya is a big business. And that's why you will find we are discussing the same, same personalities year in, year out. So 
for me, let's not lie to Kenyans. Kenyans are not stupid anymore. In fact, the Gen Zs have actually you know, shown us that uh, we are no longer stupid. Okay. They can dig out facts yeah. about, about people. So this is, they can call it whatever you want to call it, broad-based broad government, but it's another handshake. Mm -hmm. And that is the genius of a failing political regime yeah. that cannot deliver on their promises. Okay. So you bring in the noisemakers. And who are the noisemakers? The biggest ones are ODM. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I'll give you a chance to respond as I uh, give you also yeah, closing yeah, remarks. Yeah. Just one minute. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, respond fast. You, you know, you know, I really don't want to uh, to exchange with uh, my good friend Ekuru, but uh, I think he's a lawyer, a seasoned lawyer, and understands that uh, for parties to be in a coalition, there must be a proper. Uh, coalition instruments in place and deposited with the Registrar of Political Parties. Secondly, uh, I have said that ODM is a leading party in the opposition and we will continue playing that role of opposition. Is that we inspired? have a series of activities which uh, we are going to conduct around the country as the opposition party. And even our colleagues who've joined the government, we are going to oversight them. If Hone Bombardi comes uh, with a bill that is punitive, finance bill that is punitive, I tell you, ODM would be the first party to oppose. And that is ODM. That's what we are meant for. Uh, uh, and uh, when he talks about failure of opposition, I think uh, we are equally to blame. Because, uh, as you know, uh, Trevor, mm -hmm. Uh, my friend uh, Ekuru he is the party leader of Third Way Alliance, yeah. which is an opposition party. So I think he no, should also be telling. We are not opposition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. A, yeah. We are not in government. You are. A, <laughs> we have alternative. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. So I think he should also be telling us yeah. what they are doing as Third Way Alliance to provide. But I brought Punguza, Mr. Mr. You opposed yeah. it. On you this killed government. it, mm. and it will uh, You know, in the last uh, <laughs> in the last uh, uh, electoral circle. Yeah before the 2022 election. Mm -hmm. He declared himself as a leader of opposition okay. and even formed a shadow cabinet. But now you're the but, deputy uh, party how far did he go with that? ODM. Is there disquiet yeah, really? ODM as the deputy yeah. party leader? Yes. There is disquiet. There is no disquiet in ODM. ODM is a solid, politi united political party all the time. All right. But at the same time, <laughs> we allow our members to have divergent views. All right. We allow that democracy to thrive. Okay. But we have a way of always coming together and uniting behind issues. Okay, Manzo, closing remarks, one minute. Well, let out me say that uh, the country needs to be put in order. We are doing very badly. <laughs> the, none of the demands of Gen Cs have, have met. Parliament has failed Kenyans. Uh, executive has failed Kenyans big time. Uh, it's a high time. Uh, all things were put into perspective and we developed the country. There's no development going on in the country. Okay. Most of the projects have stalled uh, and uh, the president should utilize the funds of the country, the taxes of the Kenyans mm -hmm. prudently, running around really. If he really wanted to help Baba, he would be meeting presidents who are his friends or on telephone with them, but not going to Nyanza. Nope. Now, if Baba doesn't go to African Union, he'll regret why he never helped him and why he had to run to Nyanza instead of going around Africa okay. to help him. All right, Ekuru. And, and Nyanza will rebel against William Ruto because Baba will not get the position. Based on the, on the qualifications I said, and also based on what Manzo is saying, the campaign for Baba to go to AUC is very cosmetic. It's, it's, it's meant to manage the political uh, disquiet in the country so that uh, I can continue going into slumber. And that's why, for me, I bring back the idea of 2018 and Sheikh. Because the Uru regime at that time knew that um, they, 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 are, they are not able to fix some of the things that they promised Kenyans. And I see Ruto, because Ruto was part of that regime. Okay? But the only person who was able to mobilize who has created a political pedigree over a period of time and with a constituency that can actually disrupt the governance of a country was Jacom. And therefore, what do we do? Bring in Jacom. Jacom knows he will not run in 2027. Also, he is not being honest here. He will not run. He will not offer himself. But William Bruto, in his wisdom or lack of it, he thinks that if I bring in now Raila in another fake handshake, 
like they did in 2018, then I will galvanize Luo Nyanza because I have betrayed the people of the mountain. You know? And so you can see the, the focus yeah. is Luo Nyanza and, of course, uh, Western Kenya. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, and of course, other pockets of, of the country. And the calculation is about uh, how many votes I can get. Okay. But I want to throw a challenge to the Gen Zs. Yeah. yeah? Eight million Kenyans did not vote in 2022. It is not the vote that Raila Odinga garnered. It's not the vote that Ruto garnered to win the presidency. So we truly want to change this country. Please go and register. Yeah. And then go and vote on the day of the election. Okay and protect your vote, and you will form the next government. Okay. This with Jinga, your tomorrow's leader must stop. When is tomorrow coming? Okay. When, when our real life struggles are Down. today, okay. school fees, education, yeah. health, unemployment, and all those things. All right, so it's one minute, party leader. <laughs> well, uh, I think uh, for me, uh, uh, Honorable Raila Odinga, uh, who is my party leader, is a reputable African statesman, mm -hmm. and uh, he stands a, a high chance of winning the chairmanship of African Union. And uh, we wish him well, okay. and we need to take this as a Kenyan challenge. It is not a Raila Odinga challenge or ODM challenge, mm -hmm. and uh, wish him well. Okay. Uh, secondly, uh, ODM as a party will continue fighting for the people of Kenya. Okay. We, we are not there just to, uh, to make noise, but offer credible uh, opposition and uh, provide checks and balances to uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa regime. All right. So the fact that a few of our members have joined there is not reason enough for us to say that we are in government, okay. but we'll continue to play our role in Parliament and outside Parliament. All right, generally. And I think uh, uh, our colleagues in the Azimio coalition needs to exercise some patience that uh, Raila Odinga is not leaving us now. Not, not he you have betrayed is us. going to leave us <laughs> in February when he becomes the but AU chairman. Why are you not leaving them? Uh, well, I, I don't think that is true. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I find uh, them to have betrayed uh, Raila because uh, I think the Raila's <laughs> campaign to become the AU uh, chairperson should not be a basis for them to to say that they are now delinking from him. Okay. They will need Raila in 2027. All right. Gentlemen, thank you so much for making time. <laughs> Coming up next is Cooking Tips. Honorable Dan Manzo, Senator for Makweni. Honorable Godfrey Osotzi, Senator for Vihiga, and the Deputy Party Leader, ODM, and Dr. Kuro Court, Party Leader, Third Way Alliance. Thank you all for making time. Coming up next is Cooking Tips. <laughs>